Hello and welcome to Conversations here on NTA Network. My name is Nike, and like you know, Conversations, we talk about stuff that affects you and me. We have a professional in the house. I'll leave him to introduce himself and our guest as well. I'm Professor Titus Ibekwe, um, consultant, ear, nose and throat, head and neck surgeon. I am the head of the Department of Otorhinolaryngology Department of University of Abuja and the vice chairman of International Advisory Board of the American Academy of Otorhinolaryngology Head and Neck Foundation. Okay, thank you for coming. Thank you. Kevin, Kevin Fineface, security and energy expert, public good advocate, and uh, a blogger. And of course, you know, I'm interested to know much about my year, so I'm here to. <laughs> It's good to have you in the house, Kevin. I haven't seen you all year, I don't think. Yeah, we've not seen this year. Mm -hmm. I think uh, you've been very busy, I guess. <laughs> so, <Yeah>. The twins. <laughs> all right, now today we are going to be focusing on hearing. Um, in March, March 3rd, if I'm correct, is World Hearing Day. It's observed internationally as World Hearing Day. And um, a lot of us don't know much about our ears. We don't know how to care for them. I see Prof came fully equipped to show us about our ears and even some of the uh, technology that has come uh, through the years that help us, you know, with um, finding out if there's any issues with our ears. So that's what we're talking about, uh, technology, healthcare, and especially our hearing here in the conversation room. We'll be right back after this. When there's a child out there that's not getting the same that your own child is getting, the difference will tell and there will come a time in the society where that child is going to take his pound of flesh. Where you can actually, everything from watching a, a program with the child, you can start up the conversation from something on the TV and yeah. say, oh, you know. <laughs> for, me, for me, it's like hurry up with this business. Mm. And the other one said, I see it's not about me, it's about the guys, it's they're not ready the to marry. Yes. So if she wants to ask something, no, I know my mother very well. <laughs> In fact, the most interesting one is when I put up pictures on WhatsApp, you know, Snapchat filters and all that, she will call me. Mm -hmm. Remove that picture. <laughs> <laughs> I, there was a thing, I got tired of all that and I Today on Conversations, we're going to be talking about technology, healthcare, and our hearing. March 3rd is recognized worldwide as World Hearing Day, and our professional today, Professor Titus, will tell us a little bit about World Hearing Day. What, what happens on that day? What's the, what's the importance of the day? Thank you very much. Um, World Hearing Day is, as you rightly said, celebrated on every 3rd of March, 3rd okay. of March of every year. Um, initially, it used to be known as the International Hearing Day. Before recently, the United Nations and the World Health Organization, in recognition of the importance of the ear to human development, now upgraded it to a worldwide event. And um, third March is also very symbolic. If you look at the shape of our ear, it looks like three. So three, yeah. three represent the two ears that is expected that every normal human being should have two ears. Yeah. So that's how the symbol came about and the date. And um, every year there is always a team set aside for this event, um, which is in recognition of the problems worldwide, uh, which is quite enormous, but it's taken in batches. Um, this year we talked about um, screening for hearing, go check your ear, as simple as that. So it's one of the shortest uh, theme so far. Um, everybody is encouraged to screen the hearing because um, the ear is window to human development. I, I know that this may sound like Greek to a lot of people and yeah. um, so many people want to hear more. Why such an assertion, but it's real, it's proven. Um, Whenever a child is delivered, 
this child needs to perceive sound. And there's a critical moment within the first year of life um, when this sound is perceived, it travels through the model that we have here, through the external ear to the middle ear, and to the inner ear where the sound is um, converted from sound energy to electrical energy. Okay. And this moves through the vestibular cochlear nerve, finally to the section of the brain where procession is done. And for a newborn child, when this happens, there are some network of interconnectivity within the human brain system that this sound activates and we call this cognitive functions which includes the sense of speech the sense of good sight um, good level of intelligibility and even motor functions ability to maneuver and do some fine skills so all these are interconnected and a child that is unable to perceive sound or hear will not be able to talk. That's why you usually have deaf and dumb going together. Okay. And such a child okay. may not be able to develop his or her full potentials. And the first year of life, as I said, is very critical because um, beyond the first year, that section of the brain becomes plastic. And that means it's no longer as pliable as it would have been if it is activated. Okay. And it now takes a lot of resources, a lot of energy and effort to be able to, you know, um, rehabilitate such a child okay. into um, full human. And when you move beyond this, it's not just in children alone and in newborn, um, even in adolescent, the type of lifestyles, technology, things around us, noise, you know, habits can also affect their hearing and even some common um, uh, things that people do a lot of people think that cleaning the ear after taking their bath is one of those hygiene that must be upheld but the reality is that the ear needs no cleaning the ear cleans itself as a matter of fact the oil that we remove from the ear is primarily meant to protect the ear it has some antibiotics property to deal with organisms, infections when they enter our ear. Yeah. It has the ability to filter the air that enters our ear and trap the debris. And the ear naturally removes um, this oil when it is old and becomes non-functional. A new one is produced. Mm -hmm. So cotton board is not meant for the ear. Cotton board is primarily meant for the nose, for removing crust in the nose. So you don't have to insert your finger into the nose struggling to remove the crust. And in um, countries where real regulation is on ground, when you buy a box of the Q-tip Q or cotton board, as it's called, you will see not for the ear written somewhere. Oh. We're advocating that this should be mandatory in the country. It should be written in every pack. This not is for the, the first ear. time I'm hearing of this. I didn't know that. So yeah, it's because it's, it's <laughs> okay, I'm know. sure that you clean your ears regularly. I, I, no, I do. I do until I saw. <laughs> A clip of uh, an ENT doctor Fantastic. advising that don't use the board. Great. Now at home, like the kids, I know when you go to the to the uh, to the pharmacy, sometimes you have this box of uh, cotton balls. You see the bigger ones mm. that looks like those for the nose. Yeah. You know that areas. <laughs> mm. And when I saw that um, illustration, it opened my eyes to see because as you use your boards, you're shifting things down. Great guy. Instead and of bringing them out. Don't so, but while in, in secondary school, we used to use um, the cover of Big Biro. Mm. Mm. <laughs> you know, it has this uh, shovel shape. Oh, sure. So when you go down there, you, you, scoop. you scoop it out and clean up somewhere. Excellent. And it's interesting. Or oh, you get something, uh, the feathers. Yeah. Yes. And, and when you put the feathers It's very sweet, isn't it? Yeah. No, no, don't tell me that it takes you to the next level, Cloud Nine. You just, your eyes are closed and you're like, oh yeah, okay, God. yeah, okay, you know. <laughs> it's, it's, naturally. It's funny you should mention the feathers too. Yeah. You know, my, my dad had his uh, cotton buds and he also had a feather, mm -hmm. right? Just as part of his, you know, his grooming set, there was always a feather. Absolutely. So it brings back memories. It, you know, so listening to you now, I'm like, <laughs> really? So imagine the number of years, um, many years that have actually been destroyed yeah. as a result of this ignorance. That's right. You yeah. know, we need to get more people to know this. Now, I took my kids for us to sit down and watch. My son especially always liked to want to use boards. Mm. They watch. Seeing that now, we now know we don't have to use 
bought anymore. So I, I'm no longer buying anymore. Great. Mm. But I must confess, I, I get a toothpick. I cut off the head, got the, I get a blood head, clean it up <laughs> to try to just give that um, placebo, the placebo effect. <laughs> the, so, the sensation. Yeah, yes. the placebo effect. You know, you're trying to do the withdrawal syndrome. Uh, you don't want to use the blood. Okay. Something must at least get to that area. You know, there, there's, there's this popular warning when my kids are watching uh, some of the wrestling. and the, They say, don't try this at home school or anywhere. Please, <laughs> okay. Kevin Hansford, stop. <laughs> you know, the, the lining of the ear, let's get back to business. Mm. Um, there's a special skin that lines the ear, all right? Uh, that skin has tiny hairs, tiny hairs, not the big hairs that you can see. Okay. All right, so which we cannot see with our microscopic eyes, but with microscope, you can see. Okay. So this is the canal, all right? Over here has tiny hairs lining here, like cilia. Yeah, I've seen that. Before. Those of us that studied uh, biology, yeah. you know, early days, you know, about amoeba and the cilia. Well, the great science of biology. Great. Is, yeah. So that's how the hair moves, non-stop. So far, we are alive. It beats. Oh. So just like the wipe of um, a car. car, yeah, a glass car. Okay. The glass of a car, or the windscreen or windshield. So when that happens, what it does is that. It sweeps the debris because from time to time the skin that lines here it dies off, new Sheds. one comes up. Yeah, it's, it's shed off, right? So it's keep on wiping and moving this. It moves at about four millimeter per day. Hmm. So you can imagine how four. short. Wow. And that is a protective mechanism. As that is happening, the oil that is coming from underneath is also spreading it there, protecting your ear. You keep on moving this gently and quietly. When you are sleeping, the excess work will be dropping off on its own. Mm. So you don't really need to insert anything in the ear. And once you leave the ear, you don't cause harm, you don't cause problems. You don't allow water to enter your ears. If you see modern day swimmers, professional swimmers, they wear what looks like cap that covers the ear, apart from the eye shield. Yes. All right, so the essence, because when water enters the ear, um, you are calling for infection, a trust infection. There are a lot of organisms that have spores, especially the fungus lying here. They are dry and they are innocuous. They don't cause any problem. It's just like dry seeds lying around. Whenever you pour water, you are calling for what? Germination. Germination, yes. So avoid water going in here. Avoid cleaning the air and just leave the air alone. From time to time, at least once in a year, we are all expected to visit an ENT surgeon and... Mm you know, screen our ear. They will screen just like normal medical checkup. They check the ear. Ideally twice in a year. But we know we're all very busy people, once in a year. They will assess your ear and know the level of problem, the degeneration and all this. Adolescents, um, one of my friends that is part of this program walked in with fine earpiece and I smiled, you know. Um, the less fanciful ones that look like this. The headphones? Yes. The headphones, yeah. the, the headphones or the earphone is a lot, lot safer. You can see the cup. Yes. All right? It doesn't occlude the canal completely. But the earpiece enters the canal here and plugs everything. You have no 100 air, percent seal. Yes. So all the sounds are projected through the tympanic membrane, the eardrum you were talking about before. And this is the eardrum here. All the sound bank here. That transmitted by these three tiny bones move further, all right, further ahead to the now the cochlear system. That's where we're here. Yeah. Within there, the sound energy is transformed into electrical energy. So the one that looks like shell is the cochlear system, which subsides for sound and hearing, and that is transmitted through here. The ones like ring, they subserve for balance. So people do this over and over. And mm. with time, they can develop what we call noise-induced hearing loss. And it's a terrible one because it's a form of sensorineural hearing loss, which is very, very difficult to manage or to salvage. Okay. You know. So that's the risk we can put ourselves through. Okay. And um, some wow. of our children and the youngsters wear this from morning to night, even when they are reading. And you come near to listen to this, the amount of delivery of 
you know, decibels, the sound that is emitting from this is so high, yes. very dangerous. The same thing with workplaces. You go to um, certain environments, especially where you have um, uh, what they call, um, I don't know what it's called again in our country, the aggregation of, you know, um, People coming together to sell, to showcase what they have mm -hmm. in okay. complexes, shop complexes, right? Okay. Yeah. So over there, you see, everybody has his own power generating set. Yes, yes. On at the same time, mm -hmm. emitting a lot of noise, polluting the environment, even with the gas that is coming out of there. Whereas um, this amount of noise coming out from here is so much risky to their life, not just to the hearing. Because same can also lead to the noise in this hearing loss. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But it is known that certain level of noise also induces, you know, some cardiovascular related diseases, diseases. Mm -hmm. such okay. as hypertension, such as stroke. It has been proven. Papers are published on this. Okay. So those people that work in such environment from morning to night unprotected, they are prone to these illnesses and to these problems, you know. Whereas it will be cheaper. It will be more efficient and effective. It will be safer for all of them to contribute and have just a single power generating set, which has um, a sound protector encased around it, mm -hmm. taking away some meters away from where they are yeah. operating. And they can contribute and use this. It's cheaper, it's more efficient. Yeah, but that's where everybody. you know you have a community uh, based responsibility. Yeah. Yes. Oftentimes yeah. yes. in this part of our world, because of how the system operates, there's that high level of competitiveness. Mm. Everybody is everybody is on, on his own and nobody is together. <laughs> we operate in that kind of environment. Yes, sir. When you ask people, even if I don't know if you live in an estate, even just to take care of common areas in an estate is a problem. Because Homeowners believe that they've already owned their own. They can take care of their own environment. Mm. They don't care about the common areas. Mm -hmm. Hardly can you coercively gather these people to want to do things. Now, governments, we rely so much on government in doing things in this part of our world because a lot of us have not really been given that civic responsibility from primary school. I did, got the fear of civic responsibility from primary school. You did civic education. You know certain responsibilities yeah. you are expected to carry on. But growing up, you don't see that happening. So you now find yourself trying to be civil. Even sometimes you are at the traffic light waiting for the lights to go. And maybe there are no other cars on the other side. You're waiting, and somebody's looking at you like you're... Yes, that you happens cookies, so often. Mm -hmm. Right? That's you meet right. your neighbors, okay, let's get a common generator. They won't want to even do that. Mm -hmm. You know, so how do we now go about it? See, I listen to you, you talk about don't allow water to enter. I swim. I'm a fisherman, mm -hmm. you know. And when I, get, when I go to the village, I go for fishing also. But I swim here in Abuja here. And there's no time you go swimming that water don't get to block your ears. <laughs> you get to feel that sound. Or you use the airplane, mm. you also get to see that. So I, most times it happens to me. Once, I, once the plane you takes off, take off, you feel plane. that. Once you get to certain altitude, you begin to feel that pressure, that pressure right. in the ear. Right. What do we do okay. with that? You made mention of that. I use the um, earpiece. Mm -hmm. Now, Report said that if you use EIP, it reduces the, the level of uh, radiation Correct. that goes to the brain. But now, an ENT now is telling me now, don't use EIP, use headphone. Now, when you carry headphone, as I am now, in my, <laughs> my almost my golden age, I carry <laughs> headphone and be moving around the street. People will be looking at me. <laughs> because I bought it, there was a period two years ago, I bought his headphone, fanciful headphone, and I was using it everywhere I was going to. People were looking at me like, what's wrong with this old man with the yeah. headphone? <laughs> headphone? <laughs> you know, so what do we do? We need to get the balance. Yeah. Because people must be willing to do these things where it is convenient and easily accessible. I don't know when it becomes elitist. Kevin, you, yeah. you've, you've raised a very key point here, very vital. But what I can say is that, you know, life is everything in moderation. You know, um, as you rightly pointed out, um, it's not as EAPs should be destroyed and discarded. Okay. But we're just talking science here, what okay. is real and what is proven. Um, you use your EAPs from time to time, few minutes, few hours, you take it off. I don't think that is bad. Okay. All right? Uh, but you know that some people, it's like a habit. It's there perpetually from morning to night. That's right. 
if it's there, you know. Because in such situation, they'll say it's better to go for this for the explanation given rather than being on earphone for such a long time, earpiece mm -hmm. as the case may be. You raised another key point regarding, we we'll call it um, aeroplane ear, that's difficulty aeroplane with flight, aeroplane ear, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> difficulty with flight. Yes. It happened to a lot of people. It does. And as if you knew, we brought a gadget okay. for, for that here. This is called the ear popper. Ear what? Ear popper. 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 Ear popper. Is a very recent um, uh, technological innovation to take care of that. Um, what usually happens is that we we'll go back to the model a little bit. Okay. The ear, we we'll talked about the outer, the middle, and the inner ear, right? Okay. The outer ear starts from here and ends where we have the eardrum. And behind the eardrum, you look, there's a small square shaped opening here. Yeah. behind the eardrum, where you have these three bones projecting. That is the middle ear. There's a tube that is connected to it. You can see that running down. Yes. That's called the eustachian tube. Eustachian. Eustachian tube. The function of the eustachian tube is basically to maintain pressure balance between the middle ear and the atmospheric pressure. Okay. So the eustachian tube does a lot of work when you're trying to take off because you see rapid changes in pressure oh, when the aircraft is ascending or descending, you know. And for a lot of us, the eustachian tube may not be able to keep pace with this change and adjustment. Then there's an imbalance. Once you have this imbalance in pressure, there will be serious indrawing of the tympanic membrane, pressure sucking in. That's what causes the pain. You see mm. children shouting and crying, it's, and even some adults, yeah. right? And it could be terrible. Um, in some cases, it can lead to barrel trauma. In which, barrel trauma, what is it? Barrel trauma, in which case you have injury within the middle ear here, okay. leading to a sudation of fluid, inflammation of the middle ear when you would have come down from the aircraft. Yeah. You see, it continues. And it can even affect hearing on its own. But this is the remedy, okay. the ear popper. So if you belong to that category of people and you're a frequent flyer, you are advised to procure this. Once really? you have this, and what you do is, um, before you take off, just insert this piece inside your nose, then apply a gentle pressure on the knob. You can hear some sound. So it generates some pressure, right? Okay. That enters through here to insufflate from the nose because this ends at the back of the nose. nose. Okay, so it runs some pressure of air here, well regulated, to insufflate this middle ear. Okay. 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 And that will now help. But what, so what about using your plugs? The, 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 the chewing gum. Little or, little or nothing. Chewing gum, yes, is oh. useful. As some also people say if you're a breastfeeding mother, yeah. you should put the breast oh. in your child's oh. mouth. Or when you're taking a sip. When you're taking a sip of water or you're chewing gum, you're also struggling to do the same thing that this does. Okay. Oh, okay. Which is when you're chewing to see if that will help in expanding this. Mm -hmm. All right, but if you can afford this and you have it, it's done. This is um, quite yeah, affordable. Yeah, yeah, it is. It's, I'm um, informed. Um, we're looking at the current situation that we are in now. <laughs> but if you're flying it's, often, it's, if you're flying often, you should be, you should just be comfortable. Roughly two hundred dollars, and it's used for life. It's not as if you use and discard. <laughs> Look at the case yeah. expression. Now, when you say $200, that's you know, because when you say um, $200, that's $72,000. Yeah. Well, I guess for people... The government has not even, even approved the $30,000 minimum wage. <laughs> Dr. Dr. Before, that somebody sorry, is Dr. before you put the model away, somebody, I, I, I'm curious to know what part of the ear is affected when someone goes deaf what part of the ear is is affected commonly i know there are different uh type of yeah types okay. of, of hearing, deafness hearing but the, the the most common one at which point of the ear uh, is what point of the ear is affected okay um every part of the ear is, is important for hearing uh -huh. you know so some some parts like the external ear is basically for transmission of sound okay the pinna, which commonly we call the ear, is just to help in collection of sound. Mm -hmm. It's channeled through the um, through the external auditory meatus, which is here, mm -hmm. and then got to the tympanic membrane, which is the eardrum. The eardrum basically is to magnify the level of the sound, you know, magnify it several times alongside 
the tiny bones which conduct it into the middle ear. Mm -hmm. So this is the conductive system. If this conductive system has any serious problem, that will lead to hearing loss. Okay. The type we call conductive hearing loss. Okay? So we enter into the middle ear, which is basically contains air. Mm -hmm. Amplification also takes place here in the middle ear. Recall that's where you have these tiny bones. And, and from here is now moved to the, the cochlear system. All right? Mm -hmm. Within the cochlear system is where this energy now is transformed into electrical. So anything that is happening at this cochlear level and through this nerve to the brain for interpretation, if there is a problem here, it leads to sensorineural hearing loss. Okay. And that's the type you get through um, the noise that we talked about. So like, what, what did you say? What, you're hearing, but like, what did you say? Sensorineural hearing loss. So, okay. um, sometimes you may have only conductive hearing loss. You have big wax obstructing the ear, okay. or a child inserted a foreign body that is blocking the ear. You're talking to such a child, it doesn't understand. In the classroom, it doesn't pick what is going on, and that's why this screen of the ear is very important. important yes. So you simply remove such wax, which is plugging the ear, the child starts hearing perfectly right. Yeah. That's conductive hearing loss. Okay. And that's why we have to be very careful here. Noise, infections, toxins, a lot of things can lead to this. Yes. Even in unborn children, congenital Con problems can also lead to that. Okay. We might have some viewers that are watching you right now and they're like, oh, this might be what mommy is experiencing right now mm. or on call or whatever. I think th it's like they can't hear me very well. Okay. What do they do then? How do, you, how, how do they access proper health care? Because I, I, some of us don't really know what to do. Okay. All right. Um, I think that's an excellent question. From the time of conception, Oh, the ear becomes important, we start assessing, you know, um, the ear and its function. First step is every newborn child has to be screened with this simple machine here. This is the auto-acoustic emission. Okay. It is very safe. It doesn't have any problem at all. You know, it's simply connected and fixed into the ear of the child. Of the so, newborn? The newborn. We look at the reading here. If the newborn is hearing, it will indicate. If the newborn is not hearing, it it's, will also it's indicate. It's not by like the child moving the head or anything? No, no, that's no, not no, the indication? No, no. That's, that's not that. Okay. Because it goes to assess the cochlea that we talked about. There is a, a, a sound, there is a signal that is emitted by a normal uh, cochlea in every person. Okay. So this system has the ability of picking the signals, processing and interpreting. It, it, and it. interpreting right? Okay. So that is that. And um, it's interesting to know that November last year, um, Federal Republic of Nigeria, they, um, they passed um, this policy on ear and hearing care, because that has been the standard by WHO. Okay. When Nigeria joined the League of Nations that have such a policy. Okay. And prominently featuring there is hearing screening for newborns. So is our right to deliver your child in a hospital insist the owners of the hospital will look for an ENT surgeon if they don't have this to come and do that. If this is available, a well-trained um, healthcare professional can do this for okay. the child before the child leaves. Okay. Otherwise, when the child is back for immunization, it will be another good time to, to do this. Okay. So that you catch it young. If there's any problem regarding hearing this child, you now do everything possible to make sure that the child perceives sound within this critical first year of life that we talked about, mm -hmm. so that we have quality children. Okay. Moving from that, the adolescents and the adults, um, every six months, we are supposed to go in for the check for our ears. But beyond that, there are certain things that you, as an individual, um, uh, can do to assess yourself. All right now as we're having conversation you try and find out are you the type that keep on asking people to repeat themselves mm. pardon repeat air eh, and such things mm. when everybody is following so that's one two are you the type that tend to miss certain critical words in sentences okay. people are talking but it's not connecting okay. some, some sentences are missing 
you are not picking it. Thirdly and very importantly, um, um, listening to devices, television, radio, do you usually tune yours very high that everybody around will say, ah, uncle, they, they, it is too loud and for you it is normal. Okay. All right? Yeah. Okay, finally, um, do you normally hear some noise in the air? Either one of the ears or two of the ears, ringing noise or hustling noise or any type of noise. Or humming sound. Or humming sound, any type of noise in the air. Okay. Abnormal noise. So if you ask yourself these four critical questions as an adult, and it is negative to all, the tendency is that you have good hearing, but that does not underscore the importance of going in to assess the hearing, screen the hearing, for adults. We've talked of children, isn't it? Yes. Uh, there's another level for children. If this fails, hmm, this one is called the ABR, Automated Brain Response Audiometry. This one assesses at the level of the brain. Remember, we said this assesses at the level of the cochlea. The cochlea, yes. So this passes the level of the cochlea to go straight to the brain. To now assess this nerve, the vesicular nerve that transmits up to the level of interpretation in the brain. Okay. So that is what this machine is for. Um, then, for adults, when you present in the hospital, that is this. This is the audiometer. That's the basic machine that you are kept in a soundproof room. Um, then you get connected to this. This gives certain frequencies of sound at regulated period. And within the enclosure that you are in, you're supposed to show signal by pressing a button when you pick any of these sounds. So it assesses different level of hearing, the, the low frequency level, the mid frequency level, the high frequency level in every normal human being. So when this is done, it has an automatic graph that will plot it. So that tells us where you belong. Okay. So every six months, at least every annually, every year, that should be done. Then for um, for the senior citizens, it's very important to note that aging is a good thing, but it also comes with its challenges and difficulties. Mm -hmm. As we are aging, the organs in our body, the functions are dropping. It is natural, okay. right? And the ear is um, is not an exclusion. It, it also does happen, just as. On average, you see a 70-year-old man, a lot of them may not be seen again. Their eyes are failing. That is how the organs in the ear also fail. Every senior citizen research has shown that one out of three has very serious hearing loss. Loss. We wow. call disabling hearing loss. Okay. And they need help to improve on their quality of life, right? So. If this is detected, there are remedies. Okay. So what we have here that looks very fanciful and colorful, these are hearing aids, all right? You see some senior citizens wearing this, mm -hmm. moving around, hearing aids. So it helps in amplification of sound so that your quality of life good enough. Okay. Yeah. We need to take a quick break. We'll talk a bit more about hearing aids. And I'm also interested in the relationship in some of the drugs we use and are hearing. Because some people say, I take a drug and my ears are ringing. Right. Maybe you can throw a bit of light on yeah. that. Okay. This is Conversations here on NCA. We'll be right back after this. This is Conversations here on NTA. We're talking about technology, healthcare, and our hearing. Professor Titus is in the house and Kevin Fineface. Now, Professor, you were showing us some hearing aids, and I was actually surprised when he picked them up because the hearing aids, I remember, used to be like really big and really heavy. They, they were like a second ear on the ear, but the ones you're showing me seem to have uh, re been revamped over time. Yeah. Can you show us a bit about... Sure. Uh, well, you know... In, in, uh, um Technology is, um, is um, a very dynamic field, it changes very rapidly. Yeah. Mm, the very first set of hearing is the analogs. They are really very heavy and big, as you said. Yeah. But now that um, we're in the digital age, um, beyond, despite the fact that these appear very fanciful and small, you know, sits at the back of the ear, then the one that you connect inside goes, 
there are still there are, you have to connect there's to. another component here yeah, okay. oh, okay. there are still um completely within the canal hearing it so you can insert inside the canal nobody says it nobody knows that you're wearing anything the type um, the fbi and the rest of the cia people use the <laughs> communication i mean you see them talking to someone you watch and, too many movies well i mean uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm a security expert don't forget so so past presidents in our country today they're using the within the canal here in it okay. yes okay. So that, I, know I, I know that very well so oh, okay. you wouldn't know they're wearing anything and it does the job so it depends on what affordability the ones you can afford okay but the important thing is not how fanciful it is the quality of life that will help to improve okay. you know so in, in people concerned um you raised another important point yes about um, the, um, the use of drugs use of and, drugs and the effect on our, on our hearing and balance sometimes you know you give someone a drug and they're like no my, my ears are ringing I, I i don't i don't feel like myself and yeah. i think that has to do with balance too mm. when people say that i just wanted to know what your thoughts are on the issue okay um, certain drugs um, are categorized or classified as autotoxic drugs auto okay. autotoxic auto has to do with the ear all right okay Autology, study yes. of the ear. Autotoxic, that are toxic to the ear. They may serve other good purposes in eliminating the um, disease, or disease or concerned illness or ailment. But the side effect may turn out to be that it has a toxic effect in the ear. Um, so why are they producing it? Well, um, <laughs> it's, it's for one striking thing. balance that we're talking <laughs> of. Mm. You know, now... Um, group of drugs known as the aminoglycosides. Very common that everybody knows is gentamicin. Gentamicin, okay. streptomycin, and, and those class. And okay. even some uh, anti-malaria like quinine, you know. Um, and um, some of the drugs you use in treating those who have um, kidney failures, the diuretics that are also use in treating people that have hypertension. Mm -hmm. So some of these drugs have been known to affect either the cochlear system or the vestibular system. The vestibular system is the ring-like one that I showed earlier on in the model. So if it affects the cochlear system, that, it aff that affects hearing, ringing, noise in the ear. It affects the vestibular system balance. These people will be having dizziness, spinning effect, they move as if the earth is moving, as if they're upside down. Yeah. And more dangerously is um, herbs, some of the herbs. The popular agbo that is displayed everywhere. Yeah. Um, it's not as if these herbs, they don't have some active ingredients that can be useful in treatment of like the uh, certain diseases. They do. <laughs> After all, some of the contemporary drugs that we're using today, the ingredients used in manufacturing them come from herbs um, and from yeah. some organisms, microorganisms. Yeah. But the difference here is such um, a herb, the back of the tree or the leaves, everything is dissolved into maybe an alcohol, a solvent, without refining and picking the active ingredients. So you may have up to 1,000 components within the same, you know, um, solution. Okay. So they're, they're not doing the balance thing. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. There's no balance. So within there, you have some toxins oh. unidentified. So these are taking, you're curing one thing, you end up knocking off the ear, you end up knocking off the kidney and a lot of things. Mm. Yes. What you said now, you just reminded me of something. Last year, I took um, anti-malaria drug. The side effects was like I was in the plane. Hmm. My ears, you know, like you said, the sound, the noise, yeah. unbelievable. Now, I didn't connect it to the drug okay. until this conversation because <laughs> there was no reason. I said, I, I couldn't, my head was pounding on one hand. Then I could, my eardrum was like the sound inside from the inside. Hmm. So loud, it's like in a nightclub yeah. and <laughs> the DJ is jamming. And hmm. if you're able to take some of those checkpoints, you know, you're, you're one side eye and you don't know what's really happening. It was deafening. So it could be the adverse result of that uh, yes. drug. Yeah, Kevin. Yeah. What, what do you think we see? Uh, as I experience in quotes, as I look, I didn't know that this is going to be the side effect. I went back to the leaflet of the drug to mm -hmm. read through to know 
the side, side effects. effects. Yeah. Drowsiness was there, you know, uh, but there wasn't hearing uh, problem or maybe it took result to this okay. uh, thing that I experienced. Okay. So how can the, your profession, your, your uh, professional body, begin to relate with the pharmaceutical companies or the, you know, so that there, there could be balance. Mm. But I can tell you that the connection between the pharmaceutical industries and um, uh, the physicians is very much there because any drug that is launched in the market legally must pass through phases of trial, right? Or pass through the phases of trial in lower animals the effect will be seen and when you want to introduce it to human beings it will be under strict monitoring and uh, of a physician who will be sure of how safe the drug is and um, there could be some outliers here and there because that's why we're human we're not caught mistakes could be made but Strictly speaking, the levels of testing, the levels that this stuff passed through is made in such a way that um, it becomes difficult. But there's what is called idiosyncratic reactions. Um, you could have tested a drug within a given community and it passed through almost everybody. Okay. You know, that you randomly selected and tested for. Later on, you will realize that few individuals may have a particular reaction that is peculiar to them. You take it, you won't have the problem, Kevin. I do, it manifests almost immediately. You know, so that's why evaluation and re-evaluation, no matter how old a drug has been in the market, is very important. Okay, to re-evaluate. As technology, yes, is oh, okay. evolving, you evaluate and re-evaluate yeah. to ensure and the, the languages used in the leaflets by the pharmaceutical companies should also be made as simple as possible. You, may see, yeah. you may see tinnitus written there, or tinnitus, as some people will choose any one you want to pronounce. Tinnitus, it, it may be one of the things that's that what we call tetanus, is in that... Is, right? That's what we call tetanus. Yeah, yeah, it may be one of the <laughs> things written in the leaflets that you had. That means ringing in the air. Okay. And a lot of people really? Really? They don't know exactly that what really? it just means yeah. ringing in the ear. Yeah. You pick that leaflet, I can bet you there's a great chance that it, 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 it may be one of the things listed under that drug that you took. Yeah, doc, so it's, it's, it's a, a lot of science, that. scientific words that you yeah, know, the yeah. basic, it, the layman can understand. I think Doc needs to re-emphasize that. No words should be used. Yeah. You need to re-emphasize that on the leaflet, the tinnatus yeah. that we see mm. is ringing, is ringing in, in the ear. That's what it means. Honestly, I really do not know this <laughs> until now. Uh, professor, want, professor Titus, I'm, I'm yeah. curious to know, do we have enough ENT specialists in Nigeria? Why am I asking this? Because I took my daughter at some point last year to see an ENT specialist. And I, I find out that at the hospital, or most hospitals, we don't have ENTs at that hospital every day. It's either Monday, Wednesday, Friday, mm -hmm. and they have to come at a certain time, and they have to be in the queue. Is it because they're not... They're not enough do we have we don't have enough professionals mm. because it's really hard to sometimes get a hold of an ENT and then you know come back but you have to come back next week Wednesday and I'm like, why can't yeah. I come back tomorrow if you know it, it's, it, 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 yeah. well yeah, yeah the, um, there's a, a, that of um, in the level of ENT surgeons not only in Nigeria but world over okay you know um, but I think ours is one of those peculiar cases um, as we are speaking, we have about 240 ENT surgeons in wow. Nigeria. Nigeria. And this subserve purportedly almost 200 million, isn't it? That's where our population is headed yeah. to. That's so, which is like almost one to a million, right? Wow. So, no, um, one, to, one to 10 million. No, no, no. Uh, if 240 of 200 million population. Okay, 240. Yeah, so it's even, it's even you don't even have up to, you don't have to 360 to cover 36 states. No, no. no. So 240, that's the population now. It takes minimum of seven to eight years to train an ENT surgeon. That's beyond After medical school. Beyond medical school. 
So after your medical school uh, surgeoning for seven years, you come and you go into residency program. You need another seven to eight years before wow. you come out as an ENT surgeon. So you can see it's, uh, it takes a lot of effort. It's capital intensive. The 240 ENTs in this country to serve, we don't even know our data yet, but like let's say 200 million people. And that means that if I take my son or myself, I have to wait a long time mm. to be taken care of, except I'm a governmental person mm. or have a governmental influence to talk to someone, the CMD who can okay. ensure that yes. you know, this attention is given. Should that be the case? Uh, uh, what well, can uh, we do? Uh, yeah, now, uh, like, before you yeah. answer, sir, okay. what can we do to ensure that the people are well equipped? Prevention, they say, is better than cure. Mm. What steps can be taken to reduce the number of patients we have with these problems? Let's get people to be more informed so that they can prevent these things and we only have worst case scenarios to attend to. By so doing, we will have been able to draw some kind of balance and reduce the pressure that we, that we currently have on the few specialists that we have on ground. Well, it's not a one-off answer. It's not a one-off solution. These things, they're interconnected, they're interwoven, they're a little bit complex. Um, but I can tell you that drawing from the recommended standards by WHO, um, it's expected that every country should have about 1 is to 25,000. Wow. You know, that's for ENT surgeons. And that's doctor-patient ratio, yes. right? Yes. Okay, fine. And um, for the general um, medical practitioners, we're talking of about um, one in, um, in 600. Okay. But the ratio today, when you put all the doctors together, is about one to 6,000. Huh. So it's not just ENT alone. That means that we need to invest a lot more into the health sector. Yeah. And again, um, some years back, that was in year 2000, right? Yeah. President Tobasanjo was still the president then. There's the popular Abuja Convention where all the, um, all the countries of Africa under AU congregated in Abuja here and um, made a pronouncement that henceforth at least minimum of 15% of um, every country's budget, budgetary, annual budgetary allocation should be dedicated to health. Hmm. Minimum of 15. It was signed by all of them as a treaty. But just take a look at our budget. Over years, the best has been like 6%. And the immediate year pass is not more than 5%. So. Uh, we need to do more. We need to step up our game. You don't um, think you don't think it is because of uh, um, our over religious states of being, <laughs> where we solely depend on divinity to take care of our physical problems. Our issues. Because I mean, if the the average Nigerian, Africans, most of us, but but average Nigerian is overly religious, that you want to expect either the pastor or the imam or something to pray for that ailment to go. Um, you're, you're having ear pain and you're praying. You don't want to see a doctor. And after, after praying, you said half faith, it will be healed. So you look for a, a painkiller to go and sleep first or something that can get you to sleep in. I'm telling you, this has happened, yeah. you know. So if we have this kind of... I, I think there's a need for more enlightenment and education. What you shared here today opened my eyes to so many things. Truly. And I know that I'm empowered to also educate other persons that within my circumference of influence. Yeah, but your body needs to be able to take these things to the cradle, to the, to the nurseries, the primary schools, the secondary schools, the universities. Let them get to know this truth. They are empowered. So when you, you're, you're there, you're not using broom or feather or something to poke your ears. I wanted to also ask, is it wrong after bath to use the towel to dab? Because, I mean, you, you finish bath, and is it wrong mm -hmm. to use the towel to just dab the ear area yeah. so as to not allow some fluid? Because it's embarrassing sometimes, mm -hmm. some fluid to be running through. And you're talking. I wanted, you said something, if you're always asking, what did you say? 
and excuse, can I, are you talking as, I could hardly hear you, but how to use my sixth sense to look at your lips, collect the way your can mouth is to get to understand. Mm. Yes. Is it that how you have ear problems or that <laughs> it is your style? Because the, the, the way you communicate, yeah. I see this is so effortless. So I have to really put my ears out to listen to you, you know, to be sure. I need to be attentive. Is it that I have a year problem? Is a question. Oh, yeah. uh, alongside with the other one that I just asked. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, in your almost out of time, yeah, by yeah, the yeah, way. Yeah, anyway. So I think the first one you you should be able to handle and you should be able to throw more light on it has to do with religion. So I'm a scientist and what I'm saying is scientific basis. Yeah, science. So people like you will be able to orchestrate the other one and uh, your followers will listen to you. Um, regarding dabbing the ear after taking over. Yeah, that's cool. You, okay. You're expected to do that. You can clean the external part of the ear. Mm. But what we're saying is don't insert anything inside the Beautiful. ear. Beautiful. Okay. But very importantly, probably before we go, yeah. um, because they say prevention is a lot, lot cheaper, is a lot, lot better than uh, um, okay. trying to kill. Um, one key message that we must know is that Congenital hearing loss is with us, and there's a lot of it. That's the one inborn. Yes. And sometimes our relationship is what leads to this. Consanguinous marriages should be condemned. Con what? Condemned. What, what marriage? What marriages? Consanguinous. That's um, very close relatives Relati getting relatives. married. Relatives, okay. First yeah. cousins and all those, you know. Oh, really? Some culture in some places. Is so, that some of the reasons why some of these Yeah, yeah, yeah some when this condemned. happens... Certain um, genes that are recessive genes, they will now start manifesting as okay. bold genes. Okay. See, Prof, you need, you, to, you need to rephrase this so and it, say it again. In, you our, know yeah, in the meeting we had, in our WHO meeting last time in Geneva, it was one of the key things that we emphasized there. Um, certain uh, places like India yeah. is very common there. And some parts of our country I is... I was going uh, to say that that to, to, actually to is... So this should be discouraged. Not just only hearing problems, but it gives room for manifestation of illnesses and diseases that hitherto would have been suppressed. Uh, I call it consanguinous marriages. Consanguinous. That's consanguinous. Yes, that's, that's marriages um, between very close relatives. relatives. It should it's be completely to discouraged. Demands. Understand Don't that. marry your cousin. See, Don't marry your sister. Yeah. Don't marry That's your grammar. auntie. Mm. So <laughs> you want to break it down in a manner that the man on the streets... They understand. Yeah. Because there are a lot of people who watch NTA and conversations are those really who are on the street, majority of them. That's right, yeah. Let them know this. You know, because I, a few years ago, I traveled to the village and I was ready. I was man enough. I wanted to get married and I met the first person. Just when I was walking around with her, they said, That's your sister, your cousin. I, I moved to the next one and said, that's your sister again, you know? Brilliant. So I told, my, I told my mom, I said, there's nobody here. I'm going out of this community. Because anybody, anywhere I get to, he said, my cousin. Some of them are second cousins, mm. third yeah. cousins. Mm. Yeah. And my understanding said, no, you can't even try it. You're supposed to get somebody else out of that place. Fantastic. But see, if I had done so now, maybe some of those yeah, well, things would have been yeah, manifested. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. You, you see, intuitively, um, some of our cultures, the, the, the entrench certain preventive mechanisms, which we don't even know, yeah. after coming up with science. So as, as the moderator rightly said, please desist from marrying your cousins, your sisters, your blood relations, relations in any way to avoid the manifestation of any of this. You know. yeah. Then um, children that are born, whenever you notice that they have jaundice, please and please rush them back to the hospital. Because the, the jaundice affects hearing. Mm. Mm. It affects certain parts of the brain that controls hearing um, if it is not managed early enough. And the management can be from as simple as exposing them to light, you know, uh, in the hospital that will have to convert the type of um, uh, bilirubin within the system, which is what manifests as. Uh, to the type that the body will be able to handle, mm. the unconjugated to the conjugated type. Uh, at worst, you may need to do a blood, exchange blood transfusion for such a child to save the child from hearing, to save the child from um, any form of maldevelopment. Some of them may come down with all sorts of vein motor functions that are not well developed. They won't be able to hear, they won't be able to talk. So we should look out for all this. and. Um, 
And of course, we talked about drugs. Mm. Thank you habits. so much, Professor Titus, for coming in, talking to us about technology, our healthcare, and especially our hearing. And to Kevin Fineface for always coming to brighten up the well, conversation room. Yeah, you know, this is this is one of the best. This is actually the best conversation I actually had as it concerns to hearing. Yeah, I was just sharing earlier before now. I said, you get to 70, you start losing your hearing ability. Is it because of the way we allow sound to get into us? And we amplify this sound at early age, but we better we get to our older age and we find out that we are start having hearing problems. So we need to reduce how we put in, you know, this thing. The sound might be good, but it could be causing damage. You know? long so term. we just need to know. Thanks so much for joining us today on Conversations. Goodbye. Information is power. Everyone wants power. So feel powerful with the NTA News Mobile app, the one-stop information center. Real news at your fingertip. Be the first to report by uploading first-hand information on the U-Report link. And be the first to know by simply clicking on any of the links on the sidebar for headlines, domestic and foreign news, economy, security, politics, sports, and more. Stream live on your smartphone and tablets and stay connected. It's pretty easy. Simply download NTA News app from your Google Play Store and you're good to go. NTA News mobile app, your access to real-time information.